Wow! And today we're gonna drink as many bottles of Pinot Noir as we can before we fall over. Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. Sarah and Ashley here. <laughs> Just like you guys, I have been spending my time in quarantine watching Tiger King. So that's that's, See, I'm that's the reference. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Carol. 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 Best. So welcome back. This week we are featuring our steak grown Pinot Noir. Our Pinot Noir comes from our Teal Beach Vineyards, which is located right off the shore down here. And it was harvested in early October of 2015, which it was then aged in French oak for 28 months, making it our longest aging red. It has about 13% alcohol and it is delicious. So we are pairing it today here with some pork chops. We'll get into that. Absolutely. A little more about the wine before we go into this delicious food. So Pinot Noir, uh, traditionally from Burgundy, France, uh, kind of where this grape is native and made its name um, before it came here to America. And uh, when you think about Burgundy, um, typically they make Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. So you either hear white Burgundy or red Burgundy. Um, there's a couple other varietals that are thrown into the mix, but if someone's talking about a red Burgundy, uh, they're, they're talking about Pinot Noir. And Pinot Noir is a very thin-skinned grape. It's very light. And in body as a wine because of that thin skin um, and it tends to be a little bit lower in tannin during, uh, due to that thin skin as well especially something very light like Pinot Noir um, if you press it you're not going to have a ton of color with it um, which is why a lot of people make excellent rosés with it and things like that as well um, but Pinot Noir um, as a red varietal does uh, get exposed to its skin during fermentation to give it that beautiful color we do an old world style, style of wine making here in Zogby with most of our varietals, um, Pinot Noir definitely being one of those. And you'll notice that with that extending, uh, extended aging period of 28 months in the barrel, we're using French barrels, um, but we are using barrels that are neutral, um, so we say, which means they have been used before. And this is because Pinot is such an elegant, light-bodied wine, um, and its flavors can be so subtle that when you're oak aging, um, you really want the effects to smooth out the tannin um, and allow the wine to develop, but we don't want to impart too much oak flavor into uh, the wine characteristics and flavors as the wine is finished. We want to keep that very subtle, and that's what you know. Old world winemaking is all about. Pinot is a very thin skinned grape, so it's a naturally very light bodied wine, and it's meant to be very elegant, very finessed, um, at least in the old world style. Uh, old world, as I'm saying, typically refers to um, Europe. Europe. And then when we say new world, we're talking about America. There's a couple other categories like Australia. Australia that would fall into that. South Africa, things like that would be considered new world wines. Um, and as a general rule, um, old world wines are a little bit earthier, um, tend to be more elegant or finesse. And those new world wines um, are also delicious, but they're more, more about the fruit. Yeah. They're about that fruit up front in your face, very fresh, bright. Um, and so it's a little bit different than the style in which we produce here. Uh, which can be tends to be more traditional by nature. Yeah. Uh, so this is a 2015, which means the grapes were harvested in 2015, and spending a little over two years in the oak barrel before being bottled. Wine does change a little bit in color. Whites tend to gain color, reds tend to lose them. So you'll notice instead of um, when you when you get your bottle of Pinot and you open it at home, <laughs> you'll notice that it's, it's not more of like so a brownish tint to it. Yeah, it's not so bright in color anymore. It's super you lose light. some of that ruby red, and it gains more of that, um, you know, brownish tinge. Um, just as that aging process takes place, which is a very slow oxidation over time, um, and it's removing some of those bright, fresh, acidic flavors, but it's really gaining some of those softer tannins that allows the wine to be really smooth and what, from what I've noticed, very earthy. And fun fact about this: this is actually Dr. Zugaby's favorite varietal. And that's why they do this style. See, Pinot was our dad's favorite wine too, so he encouraged us not to only plant this variety, but to promise that we'll always take extra care in producing exceptional wines in his honor. If you guys don't know who Dr. Zugby is, um, he's Frederick Zugby Jr., Frederick Zugby II, and he was the patriarch and founder of the Zugby Vineyards. Um, unfortunately, he passed away in 2006, and he's no longer here with us, but we do kind of feel like uh, he's always here and uh, watching his family live out the legacy. All right, so what do you say? We uh, taste Dr. Zugby's favorite wine? Absolutely. All right, <laughs> cheers. Very earthy. You get lots of um, spices to it. 
I get a lot of um, black licorice. Uh, if you really want to nerd out a little bit about the tasting profile of this wine. Earthy, oh, just dirt, wet forest floor, moss. Almost like leathery in a way too, but it's very subtle. It's not overdone. It's very yeah, soft. Yeah. And it's light on the palate. It makes it um, a very food friendly wine. It's easy to pair. It's not going to overpower too many parts of your dishes. It does have good fruity notes of ripe cherries though as well. Definitely. So it's Black got a good cherry. balance of earthiness and fruitiness, which is what they recommend for a good pork chop. And it goes well with many other things, bruschetta, and mushroom risotto, and pork, and lamb. I would even do a really nice grilled chicken with um, some Cajun on it. Grilled veggies too. It's one of those things though, uh, when I was studying wine in college, um, mushrooms and Pinot Noir or pork and Pinot Noir were those two like classic pairings. We're lucky enough to have um, Cajun pork chops here. We are eating from a local place that is located about 10 minutes away from here in Geneva, Kindred Fair. Yeah, Kindred Fair is right on 5 and 20. And it's classic. Um, American food, but it's uh, farm to table. So that's something they're very big about is working with the local community farms. Along with like a tight knit full time um, staff are still working there to provide you with takeout Tuesday through Saturdays from 1 yeah. to 8 p.m. So they're bringing you an awesome selection. Their full menu um, plus the daily specials from Tuesday through Saturday. And in addition to that, they uh, have these family meals, which is what we did tonight. Kindred Fair is uh, really well known for having such a great local wine list as well. And something fun that they do um, once this is all over, I'm sure they'll continue it, is prefix meals on Monday evenings. They're one of the few restaurants that's open on Monday nights in Geneva, and they do no porkage fee. So you can you know, enjoy the wineries on your visit here, pick your favorite bottle from the day, bring it to dinner at no porkage fee. Mm -hmm. So they'll chill it down, they'll pop it open, and you get this awesome meal with with a cool local wine that you got to pick tonight we got a pork cajun pork chop family meal they're grilled pork chops you get four the side of uh, cauliflower and roasted fingerling potatoes um, and, salad. and salad yeah enough for four people so we will split it eventually with our dear friends yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we got this whole meal for only 45 dollars yeah. so a for family meal that feeds four for 45 bucks yeah. wow we just wanted to make sure that you were still watching <laughs> yeah Pork is known to go really well with Pinot Noir because um, of its like tanginess and sweetness. They kind of complement each other from like that smoky and earthiness that you're going to find in both. Yeah, when you grill down the pork, they say that it, it gets the sweetest like flavoring to it. Um, but the earthy tones of the wine kind of just balance it out. And they also say it's a neutral meat, so they say to always pair it with a wine that's going to elevate it. Absolutely. And our Pinot Noir is going to do that for sure. That's earthy tone. So. And it's light enough in body where it's not going to overshadow the meat that's a little bit lighter. Yeah, they recommend low tannin, fruity though. Should we, should we taste our food with some Pinot? Yeah. Wow. Even just with the potatoes, it's amazing. When it's tender enough that you can cut it with a butter knife, that is when you know. I recommend you get your pork um, the same temperature you would get your steak. And if you're a little weird about your medium rares, then just go medium. We want medium rare. Absolutely. Especially with to go, you know, if you want to reheat it when it comes home. I love the fact that this fruitiness from this Pinot Noir, those cherry notes, and it going against the fatty juiciness of this pork, it just is so tasty. I've eaten way more veggies since we've started, started this than I probably have in an entire year. That mm. was delicious. I'm really full right now. What was your favorite part about the pairing, Sarah? Hmm. I think, like I said earlier, once you get that really fatty juiciness from this from the pork with the fruitiness of the cherry notes and the pinot. Yeah, I think that might have been my favorite. I really liked um, kind of that smokiness of the grilled pork um, pairing with the earthiness of the pinot um, and that slight, you know, Cajun spice. It wasn't overwhelming either. And with the low tannin red, it just kept everything really um, balanced on the palate. I never got, you know, a feeling that something was too spicy or... And it went really good with our side dishes as well. Solid, solid pairing. We didn't get around. dessert again. <laughs> Girl Scout cookies again. Yay! This wine's gonna be 20% off all week! Yay! Who would have ever thought Pinot Noir would be 20% off? <laughs> all right! Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you every Wednesday evening on WOW! Yeah, and tag us in your pairings because we would love to see you and share. Get some takeout from Kindred Fair this week and uh, grab our Pinot. See you soon, guys. <laughs> <laughs> wow! <laughs>
peanut noir comes from. Ashley, where does it come from? Why, Sarah, the Abilene comes from a... Tennessee. <laughs> know about Harambe. I'm sheltered, okay? I don't have social media. She doesn't have social media, but still, how do you not hear about Harambe? It's still on the news and stuff.